In this presentation, we will use tax software to consider the implementation and recording of other kinds of income. We will be using Lacert tax software, Lacert owned by Intuit, the owners of QuickBooks. It could be similar kind of data input process and the filling out of forms in any kind of tax software, however. First, we'll think about gambling winning. So if you get your documentation, you say, hey, I got a W-2G, then you're going to say, well, that's probably some type of income that's going to be recorded on the W-2G. We have the reportable winnings in line one. And then the question is, well, how do I enter this into the tax return into the software? Remember that if you have the winnings, you may not get some kind of documentation to record the winnings like this unless it's over a certain amount from a, an established institution, which again, the IRS will try to pressure to, to force them if they want the deduction to give you some type of documentation. And generally the rules will be if they're over a certain dollar amount, that will indeed be the case. But if there are gambling winnings that aren't reported and you receive gambling winnings, unless otherwise said by the code, then you're supposed to report that as, as income as well. But uh, if you see the form, the documentation for it, typically that's going to be the typical way that you will see this. We'll see, okay, I got this W2G. How am I going to enter this into the software? Where does it go in terms of putting it into Lacert or the tax forms or any type of software? Here's our mock uh, 1040 for James Smith. We've got our information up top, single uh, taxpayer for the filing status. We've got the income in line one. So the question here then would be, well, where would that go? Where would this uh, information go for the gambling winnings we're going to be looking at line seven other income from schedule one this then would be supported by schedule one so i'm going to go to schedule one over here and say okay here's schedule one is there anything related to specifically gambling winnings nothing here specifically related to gambling winnings therefore i would suspect it would go on the other income line so i'm going to go ahead and use the software to jump to the other income line by going right click Let's jump to that other income line. And I see here we have a data input screen related to a W2G. That's the one that I'm looking at. I'm looking at a W2G. So I'm going to open that up and I see gambling winnings here. So gambling winnings, lottery winnings. I want the gambling winnings. So I'm going to go to the data input screen related to them. And then I'm going to put it in the gross income. And I'm going to say that, well, let's just say that we had a thousand to make it uh, straightforward gambling winnings. And then we're going to go back to our forms and let's see what happens. So we've got the gambling winnings then listing at a thousand here, one thousand dollars. That's going to add up here on line uh, nine, and that's going to pull forward to the ten forty. Now the thing you want to be careful of when you when you use this other income line uh, is that you don't want to make it something that's going to be subject to social security taxes because then because then you'll be dealing with social security taxes if it's not something that's subject to social security taxes. In other words, if it was a business type of activities uh, that you had that you had here, then uh, that you could be subject possibly to social security tax, Medicare, and uh, social security, which would be basically like kind of like the payroll taxes. So you want to make sure when you're using the other income line that you're appropriately formatting it as to whether you have are subject to social security tax or not here we got the gambling winnings we don't have it's not a, it's not a business it's just another type of income we're subject to the income tax on it we should not be subject to the social security and medicare so that, that 1000 then feeding into the first line of the 1040 so there's the 1000 there so the 100,000 is going up by that 1000 to 101 standard deduction of the 12000 that means that our taxable income is at 88,800 the tax then on it calculated on page 2 then at the 15,493 and we have no other tax that is happening here uh, on that tax including no other basically uh, self-employment tax all right let's go back to the page 1 and we've gone back to the original settings. Now we're at the 100,000. We don't have the gambling winnings in there any longer. Now we're going to consider jury duty. What if we have the jury duty? So we would typically have documentation saying, hey, there's going to be income related to the jury duty. The question then will typically be, well, how am I going to put this into the 1040? Uh, so if we look down, it's going to be a similar process. We're going to go, oh, so that's probably an other income. That's an unusual income that's not there all the time. And therefore, in other income. And therefore, they put it on recently a separate schedule, which is going to be Schedule 1. So Schedule 1 then, I don't see anything specifically related to jury duty. Therefore, I would assume it goes into other income. I'm going to right-click on the Lacert software to help me figure out if that is indeed the case. I'm going to scroll back down and say, is there a data input screen related to jury duty? There is. Here's a data input screen related to the jury duty pay. I'm going to go to the jury duty pay. 
Then within jury duty, I'm going to put that $50 we got for jury duty. And then we're going to go back to the forms and scroll down. There's the $50 for the jury duty. If we then go over to the first page of the 1040 and scroll down, there's the $50 that pulls into 7A, bringing, of course, the income up to 100050 100, now, standard deduction 12200 We have the taxable income 87850 Then going to page 2, tax on it 15265 Note that there's no other income, once again, because in that, I mean, there's no uh, other taxes that are being calculated. In other words, the jury duty is, is not subject to Social Security and Medicare. Therefore, in line 15, we don't have any basically Social Security and Medicare as we would have if it was some kind of business type of income, like a Schedule C income.